Okay. Um, let me know if you can't hear me. If you have any questions, please feel free to come off mute and ask me. This can be interactive or you can also write questions in the chat. I'm happy either way. Um, but yeah, I will just get straight to it. So I'm going to share my screen and there we go. So let me know if you can't see that. Um, because I've just changed some things around, I need to bring the chat box back for myself. Sorry, just getting some things organized. Okay, so here we are on cookiedo.com.au. The first thing to know is that when you create your account, make sure you do it on the AU website because once you've created it for a certain email address, that's it. You've created it for that email address. Um, so we've had some customers um, accidentally set it up on a different site and then it affects certain things. Um, so yeah, this is um, actually, I'll show you what it looks like when you would go onto it. For the very first time, when you go to cookiedo.com.au, you'll see this um, screen here. The, the best way to sign up is by pressing the try it for free button. It will ask you for just a few details. It's mainly name and email address, I believe. And it will ask you to set up a password actually. And then you're going to get an email and you need to click the link in that email um, to confirm your account. Once you've got an account, you can just log in and it will save your password to make it easier. So it's going to be slow because I'm on Zoom. <laughs> it is normally a lot quicker than this. Oh, what's it doing? Okay, let me try again. Sorry. It's normally an instant. Okay, here we go. So the first thing you see is a search bar and that's the main use of Thermomix. So I'm gonna come back to that. So if you scroll down, you're going to see new recipes um, and there's always a little video for you to see. There's what's trending. So this changes each week. Um, it actually changes each day, um, I've noticed. So, um, and then yeah, there's some articles, some blog posts and some you know, other recipes that Thermomix thinks might be of interest to you. And then we come down to our latest collection. So every month we're getting new recipes on Cookie Do. It's a really great value. And these are triple tested head office you know, input recipes. So they're really great. So every now and then just come down and have a look at these and you can press the see more button to see all the collections um, sorted by newest. And you can change that sort if you want to, but um it's kind of a way to find out what's new is by pressing that button um then we've if you keep going down um yeah there's a video and um some help options there as well so what i want to show you also is your um icon up the top here yours won't have a picture unless you've added it in so it might um is where you've got your profile, your account and help. Help is where you come to find tutorials on how to do all things in Cookie Do. There's little videos along the way, there's FAQs, and there's also a section to contact Support Center if you can't get a hold of your consultant um, as quickly as you want to. Um, in your account, here's where you, because when you first join up you have 30 days free subscription when you purchase a new thermomix product whether it's a cook key or a tm6 normally you get a six month subscription for that um, at the moment there is a promo one to get an extra 12 month subscription for anyone who is investing in a thermomix this month um, but after that once your subscription renews to resubscribe and um, keep going with that you come down to the membership tab and press the subscribe button and then it will ask you for your credit card details it's 69 dollars a year to subscribe to cookie do um yeah don't worry about the rest of that um there that, that's mainly what you're going to do in your account um the other great thing here i really want to show you all because i know most people miss this in your if you press view profile you can come down to update your filters and I'm going to show you filters later but basically in a nutshell the default setting for new cookie do recipes are that uh, new cookie do memberships sorry profiles 
are that your settings would be set to have Australia ticked. And now what that means is that um, you're going to have access to the recipes that the head office in Australia have put into Cookie Do. So if you want to um, access more recipes, each time you search, you can change these filters. But if you want it to be your default settings that are always changed, you can come in here and do that here. And that's where I've got English ticked and then I've unticked Australia. So I've got all these other countries that have some Australian recipes. Um, so you can see all the different countries there. So now in my searches, any English recipe is going to come up for me. Now, if you don't have a blade cover accessory, you might want to untick that just so that you're not in the middle of a recipe and it asks you to add that in and you're like, oh, how annoying, I don't have it. I wish I didn't start this recipe. Um, same as if you've got a TM5 or a TM31, you may want to change that the model there because you might you don't want to be in the middle of a recipe and then it asks you to start high heat, for example, and you can't do that on an earlier model. If you've got a TM6, you can use recipes from all models. Um, if you've got a older model, TM31 or TM5, most of the recipes will work on your thermomix. It's really it's only a few of those um, recipes that won't work for that. So it's good just to have your filters set the way you want them so that every time you search, it's you're going to get the results you want. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of that so far? You guys are all good. Um, no problem. So now I'll just show you the search bar. Here's where you can type in, if you know the name of the recipe you want to make, you can just type it in and it will come up. If you aren't sure what you want to make, but you know you want it to be something that has chicken in it, you can just type in an ingredient. If you want it to be more specific, like you want it to have chicken and, I don't know, pumpkin, you can type in two different ingredients and they'll come up. If you don't know what you want to cook at all, but you know you want it to be a breakfast or a lunch or a dinner, you can type in a keyword and the recipes will come up. So we've got how many? 1,200 breakfast recipes that have come up there. Um, if, if you don't even want it to be a type of meal, it could be a keyword for a recipe, like you want it to be low carb, for example, um, or you might want it to be, oh, diary, <laughs> dairy free, um, just, any keyword you can think of, you might just want it to be healthy and you can type in the word healthy. Um, or if you have an event coming up and you want it to be, oh, let's do this one, high tea. Some high tea recipes have come up. Um, Father's Day is kind of coming up. So you, you can just, like the keyword searches are really good. Um, I think head office have done a really good job at tagging each recipe. Another thing you can do is if you want to use a particular mode on your Thermomix, like say you want it, you've never used the ferment mode and you want to try that, you can type in the mode word and the recipes will come up um, like sous vide or ferment or um, slow cook. You know, you just want to give it a go. You could even type in the word um, high heat to see which recipes use high heat mode. Um, so yeah, just some examples of things you can use that search bar for. If you want it to, um, if you want to, let me go back to the chicken example, change the filters for this one search, there's the filter button here. You can narrow your search down by a category. You can type in another ingredient you want to have in it, tags. That's what I was kind of talking about um, with those keywords. You can change the difficulty, time, portions, ratings. Um, just bear in mind with ratings that not everyone who uses Cookie Do comes back to rate recipes. Um, and also it's a little bit subjective. For example, um, I spoke to someone recently who said, oh, that chicken katsu curry, the Japanese katsu curry, that was gross. I, you know, I rated it as a one. And I said, oh, that's really interesting because I've made that recipe and I loved it. Um, just a question, have you tried katsu curry before from a Japanese restaurant? 
no, I've never had Japanese curry. I've only ever had an Indian curry. I was like, oh, okay. Well, just so you know, the cookie dough recipe actually tastes very much like a traditional Japanese katsu curry. You know, I've been to Japan. I've, I love that recipe. She's like, oh, well, I just don't like it then. So I'm thinking that one star she gave it is not to the recipe. It's just because she doesn't like katsu. So sometimes you kind of have to bear in mind that um, not everyone rates things um, in the same way. I guess that's my message there. So I take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, the other thing you can search by, if we go back down, is what I was talking about earlier. So if you want to keep it on Australia, but every now and then, like you might want to particularly look for a recipe from the UK, you might want to um, do that. So you can change that all there. Okay, so that's filters. Um, please, as I said, ask questions if you need to. Um, so yeah, that's about the search and the filters. Once you've found a recipe that you're wanting to work with, you can either go into it or you can organize it by these three dots here. So I could put it in my cook today. I'll do that. I'll put different ones in different ones so I can show you the, um, on my Thermomix. Chicken noodle soup, let's bookmark that. Let's put curry into a collection. So these are my folders. Um, if you don't have any, you can create collections here and you can name them whatever you want. Let's put that in my chicken folder and I'll put this couscous one on Sunday because I've already got the rest of my week pretty well planned. And because I've put that in my meal planner for Sunday, I'm going to add it to my shopping list as well. So there are the different options of what you can do with when you're organizing recipes. The other way is if you go into it, you can press this add button here and that's where you choose all those options. Now, the other thing, once you've gone into a recipe, this is how you rate it. To hover over the star you want to give it, um, be honest because um, if a recipe really is terrible, it's good for people to know. Um, or if it's great, it's also good for people to know. So um, yeah, give the recipes a rating. As you scroll down, you have all the info about the recipe. Um, including the serving size. Uh, you've got your ingredients, your steps, your nutrition guides down the bottom on the left. Most recipes have a tips and tricks section. Um, and if we keep going, you can find which country it's from. So this is from Switzerland in their Varoma collection. Um, yeah, so that's, that's um, in the recipes. Oh, the other thing, oh no, that's okay. So that's what the recipes look like inside. Now that I've shown you how to organize the recipes. Um, so basically we've been in the explore section. The other thing, oh, actually, before I move out of here, I'll just show you we're on the search recipes section. If I change this here, I can search collections that are about chicken in particular. Um, I don't change that very often, I think. One of the times I've changed that is when I'm trying to show someone where to get, like, for example, if I type in the word baby food, um, all the recipes come up. But if I want to show someone a particular collection, um, because I, I just remember this from the other day, I was trying to show someone this book here called Louise Keats Whole Food Child. So I didn't want to just see all the recipes. I wanted to show her this collection because these are specifically made by a nutritionist who I've met and um, been to her lectures and I think she's really awesome. So I wanted to show her recipes to a new customer who um, is having a baby. So um, that was that's one of the reasons why you might go to collections if you want to be super specific. Um, otherwise, I think recipes is where you mainly um, keep it, but that's up to you. Maybe everyone does things differently to me. Um, yeah, so this is all in the explore section where we've been searching and adding and organizing our recipes. So now if I go to the My Recipes tab, you'll see here it comes automatically to bookmarks and you've got the recipes that I have bookmarked. You guys watched me bookmark the noodle soup. Um, I've got a few others bookmarked, things that are our favorites or things that I'm wanting to try. I just quickly bookmark it. Um, and then here we've got this, oh, and if, sorry, up the top, if you press created, these are your created folders. So you can go in and edit those. Um, and these are my saved collections. So um, you can edit those as well. 
But if I go back to all, you'll notice this tab called Created Recipes. Here's where you can add in your own recipes from scratch, like family favorites, or you can import them from Recipe Community. And there's videos that show you how to do it, but I am going to show you tonight how to do it. Um, so you press the plus and then you can either import or create. So create is where you do it from scratch. So, um, you know, call it something and you can add a picture if you want. Um, it's up to you whether you add all this info, you're the only one seeing it. So whether you bother or not adding in the info, that's fine. Add it your ingredients here. So if, let's say we want 100 grams of water and we want 50 grams. What am I even making here? <laughs> I'm really just making stuff up here. Okay, this is something pretty gross. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I should have thought of something in particular. <laughs> um, anyway, so then we add our steps. So that's just me typing. And then when I add steps, um, instead of literally typing the words, the best thing to do is come to the ingredients button and add which ingredients are going to be in the first step. So let's put clove of garlic and an onion in. That's our first step. Um, and then for the um, settings, I'm going to choose, let's chop that on speed five for five seconds. So I'm going to chop that onion, onion and garlic. Sorry, I just went out of that. That was silly. Um, you need to press the green tick. So my first step is to add the ingredients and chop them. Then I press the tick and I'm going to the next step. So you, again, from your ingredient list, just choose what's going in next. Let's add some <laughs> tomatoes and water. This is, this is gross. Um, and then I will, what will I do with all this? I'll blend it on speed seven for 30 seconds. So I'm making a puree. <laughs> then I'm going to add my, I should have thought of something real. Sorry, this is such a weird example for you guys, but you get the idea. And then we're gonna cook it. So let's say I'll cook that for 10 minutes. Choose a temperature. I'm going to want it on reverse because now the mince is in and just on speed one. So I'm making sort of a weird savory mince. Anyway, that's really gross. And that's it. So instead of typing what to do, you choose from these buttons. And now the reason you do that, um, let me confirm this and say it's done. The reason we do that is so that it's easier on your Thermomix to use guided cooking. So now if I stop this share and I come down to my Thermomix, I can show you how to find all those recipes. So when I go to my menu, if I go to my week, here's where you find all the recipes that you've put in your weekly planner. Um, if I go to my recipes, here's where you can find your bookmarks and your folders and your created recipes. So that test should be there now and yeah it is so it's here so the guide of cooking for created recipes is a little different than from other ones um but it's it's really good i think it's really great actually so you press start cooking and it tells you um this is not an official recipe please be safe you know they've got a little disclaimer there and we're going to press this green arrow and it tells you what to do. So when it's time to add your ingredients, you do need to press the scales down here and it's telling me what to put in. One clove of garlic and one onion. Once you add in the ingredients, you press the cross and go to the speed and it's telling me to turn to speed five and the timer is set for five seconds. Once you've done that, you press the cross and then you're ready to go to the next page. So now we're adding in two more ingredients. So I'm going to press my scales again as you add each item, you do need to tear it in between, press the cross, and then we press our blades to do our um, speed setting. So 30 seconds, speed seven. After you've done that, you 
press the arrow and we're on to our last step, which is adding 500 grams of mince. So again, put, turn the scales on and it tells you what to add here. Even if it was 10 things in one step, they'd all be listed here. You put them in and you press tear in between each step. And then we come to do our cooking. So the timer is set, the temperature is set, and all we need to do is turn it to speed one like it says. And then we press cross, press the arrow, and it says enjoy your dish. So that was a really, sounds pretty yucky to me, but I wanted to show you how created recipes work. Does that make sense or did I go too fast for anyone? You guys are all good. Okay, so the other way of creating recipes is by importing them from recipecommunity.com.au or from Cookie Doo itself. Now, most people ask me, why would you want to import a recipe into Cookie Doo that's from Cookie Doo? The reason you might want to do that is if you want to change a recipe. So you might love a particular recipe from Cookie Doo, but you want to add more veggies in, or you think it needs to cook for a bit longer, or you need to whatever. So you can press this green button, press the import recipes tab, and then um, you get your URL. So I've been wanting to import this recipe. So you find it on recipe community or cookie do come up to the address bar, press copy, then come back and we're going to paste that. So now the recipe is there. Now the only thing is the ingredients are there. Um, when you import a recipe from a uh, re recipe community, it depends how it has been entered. This one was entered a long time ago. This was entered by one of my friends years and years and years ago. It might even have the date somewhere. Oh, 2010? No, it was, it was, yeah, maybe it was 2010 actually. Um, so it hasn't been set out the way recipes are set out these days where it's in steps. So you actually might want to come and edit um, the, the recipe. So it says place butters, sugars and vanilla in tea and bowl. And then, but you might want to add another step for the rest because you think that all needs to just be one step. So I've copied and pasted and got rid of that. Um, actually, I want, we're going to then cream that together in the first step so and also here where it says butters sugars and vanilla I want to actually add it properly so that it um, so that it works better on the thermomix screen so just choose it from here so sometimes recipes need a little bit of editing like I'm showing you but usually they're good to go straight away and you don't need to, but it, it really does depend what you're adding in. So here where it says cream together for one minute, speed three to four, I'm going to choose that from the setting. So one minute, let's go 3.5. And then that's set. And you just keep doing that for the rest of it. So step two with TM still running, add egg through hole, good. And Continue mixing speed three to four for 30 seconds. Again, I'm going to come and choose that so that it on the th thermomix screen it says that. Okay, so here where it says add flour, I'm going to literally choose the flour from the ingredients list and salt. So again, just choosing it, that's from there. Need on interval speed for 30 seconds. So I can choose that from here, I think. Interval speed. Um, 30 seconds. Okay. And then last step is to add your chocolate chips. So again, I'm going to choose it from my recipe list. Stir through with spatula, blah, blah, blah. So that's done and I'd be happy with that on my Thermomix screen. Press confirm, that's done. 
and there's your recipe. So that's created recipes. Um, again, there are more tutorials here, like how to create, import, edit, and then how to do it on your TM6. Um, it's probably way better than what I've shown you, but um, the point of this tutorial was also to see if you guys had questions, but also just sometimes people don't like watching these videos. So the other thing on Cookie Do I wanna show you is the last tab called My Week. Now in here, is where you can see all those recipes that you've organized for the week. So today I made soup and bread. Um, I didn't make that. I just did that with you guys a few minutes ago. Um, and then I've got things in for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I, and again, I added that. I mean, I'll go with you guys for Sunday. And then with the shopping list, if you want to move any of these things around, press the three dots, you can move to a different day or remove it or add to shopping list. Um, once you're happy with your shopping list, I'll press show ingredients. Now it's put all the recipes that I've got in my shopping list into categories so that as I'm going down the aisles, all the spices are together, all the dairy is together, meat, everything like that. You can also add other items. So I've added a few things that I want for my pizza on Friday. Um, you can add whatever. Once your list is ready, it's good, a good idea to go through and take out things that you've already got at home. Like I've already got a big bag of cashews. I've got lemons on the tree. I've definitely got water. I might need to buy some wine. I've got pasta. So you just go through and tick what you've already got. And then um, as you're going through the shopping aisles, you can have your phone with you with the app open. So as you put the item in your trolley, you use your finger to actually tick it off. So you can say, okay, I've just put couscous in my trolley, let's get it off the shopping list. So by the end of your shop, it should be an empty list. And that's when you know you've bought everything you need for the week and nothing extra, you're not um, wasting any ingredients, you're gonna be saving money and um, you know being a lot more organized, which is handy. Now, if you don't want to be the one doing the shopping, up the top here, you've got an option to share it with someone else or to order your ingredients. Now, this only works through Woolworths. Um, so you just press Woolworths. I think they're waiting for other supermarkets' websites to get up to date on the coding or whatever it is. Um, but it does detect brands for you. So um, if you don't like a particular brand, you can change it. So say you don't want that garlic paste, um, you can swap it for a different garlic paste and you just press swap and select. Um, I don't like vegetable oil, so I would swap that and I would actually just use, if I can type, I would use olive oil. So whatever, that's just me. Um, and there you go, I've already got olive oil there, so I might want to delete that entirely. Um, so yeah, you just go through and get your, your list ready. Once it's ready, you press add to cart. Um, and as you can see, it's quite expensive because I didn't delete any of those spices off the list, um, which once you've got, everything's a lot cheaper, but buying them in the first place is pretty expensive. Um, well, not, not like expensive, expensive, but like, you know what I mean? You're only using a little bit in each um, recipe. So yeah, um, that's the shopping and the weekly planner. And that is basically cookie do in a nutshell. I, I wanted to keep it to half an hour, but um, yeah, does anyone have any questions or um, anything you aren't sure about, or anything you want me to go over? You guys are all good? No, we're all good, but thank you, Laura. That was really good. Oh, good. I'm glad that was helpful. Yeah. We love watching your um, your videos and stuff. You're uh, very thanks, informative. So it's, yeah, it's really good. No. Thank you. That's really kind of you to say. <laughs> That's okay. No, it's like, yeah, I enjoy when you girls get on and do stuff when we do our meetings and stuff because it's good to always learn. I'm only new. Yeah. I'm um, in Michelle's team. Awesome. And I've been a consultant for three months. So Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's great. 
still lots of learning and I haven't done many demos, but yeah, it's always good to learn from somebody. So I really enjoy yeah. all the feedback oh, I get from others. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. And um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, you'll be able to show your customers how to use Cookie Do. Yeah. Um, really well too. So great. And um, if, if Lee and Ruth are going to stay on mute, that's okay. But just um, <laughs> bear, feel free to come off if you have any questions. Um, uh, and I have oh, one yeah. question. Yeah. I just went into to my Cookie Do site. Mm -hmm. Yours has your name on it. How do you get your name on it? Oh. Mine just says hello. Okay. How did I do that? So, yes. Up the top in profile, maybe? No, not in profile. Might be an account. And this is where I've put a, yeah, change profile. I think. Yeah, here's where I've put my name. Oh, good. Um, and change profile. Okay. So, like, I know oh, yes. some people have changed it to like be something funny or silly, like hello superstar or like hello gorgeous, because you want oh, someone to call know, you. Yeah. yeah. So like when you turn on your Thermomix, whatever is written there in, where mine says hello Laura Jacobson, you could have it be a bit more interesting if you want to. <laughs> that's a great question because um, yeah, that, that's why other now. people might be interested too. Thank you for that because I thought well, it says your name and mine doesn't. Yeah. No, that's, a that's, cool. that's great thanks Excellent. that's good all right well if you guys ever have any other questions i'm going to email this recording out because there were like heaps of people registered for this so i'm assuming they're going to catch up on the recording so i will send this out tomorrow via email so if you think of any other questions just reply yeah. back to the email and i'll be able to answer and um yeah or your consultant or whoever so no cool. right. Thank you, Laura. Thank, Thank you, Laura. Laura. That was Thanks, very Laura. helpful. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.